The most essential piece of equipment to a street lifter or someone who practices weighted calisthenics is the dip belt. If you're going to purchase a dip belt, you need to understand what makes a good dip belt. And in my opinion, and as someone who has practiced weighted calisthenics for over two years now, there are four things that make a good dip belt. Number one, the weight capacity. Number two, comfort. Number three, style. And number four, the weight of the belt itself. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the belt that I've been using for over a year now, which is the Rogue Fitness Dip Belt, and whether or not this is something worth purchasing. The best part about this belt is the weight capacity. The dip belt is made of reinforced heavy duty nylon with heavy stitching to create a weight capacity of almost 15 tons or 14,000 kilos, which not only implies that it has a huge weight capacity for one load, but it has huge durability for multiple lighter loads. Essentially, this means that even if the material of the belt were to deteriorate over time, thus losing weight capacity, it would still be well below the decreased weight capacity when you're doing your pulls, dips, or belt squats. This basically means that this belt would most likely last many lifetimes without breaking apart ever. One thing to know about the belts and its weight capacity are the O-rings. The O-rings do seem to deform over time, especially when you're using carabiners that are thin in shape. I use these particular carabiners because of their own weight capacity, but I realize the carabiner is actually digging into the metal, leaving a dent in the O-ring. So if you're gonna use this dip belt, definitely use a carabiner with a more forgiving shape. The next thing I want to talk about is the comfort of the belt. The comfort of the belt is what can cause you to fail a rep, especially when the discomfort increases as you go through the motions of the dip. The belt does not have any padding, so it could be somewhat uncomfortable at first when you're wearing the dip belt without a shirt on. I noticed when I was wearing the belt without a shirt on, the belt can sometimes dig into your skin, especially when you have a lot of load on and you don't position the belt properly. This can easily be solved by just wearing a shirt, but if you do like doing your workouts without a shirt on, just keep this in mind. However, over time, I've gotten used to that sort of quote unquote discomfort, so it's honestly not that bad to begin with. So now let's talk about the style. The Rogue belt only comes in two colors, yellow and black. I've seen other belts that come in at least five or six colors, so Rogue is quite limited in their stylistic options. But on the other hand, most belts, especially the cheap ones on Amazon, do come with just a regular black color. So at least there is an extra option to go for a yellow dip belt there. One thing I wanna note though about the style of the belts is the logo. This is one of the biggest flaws of the Rogue Fitness dip belt because over time the logo will slowly chip off. And I believe this is just mainly caused by friction when you rub the side with the logo against something else. Like if you wear the belt with the logo facing towards you, it will slowly deteriorate the logo over time. And this usually can happen within, I would say, a month, sometimes even earlier. The last thing I wanted to talk about, especially if you're trying to take street lifting and weighted calisthenics very seriously, is the weight of the belt, since every weight that you add onto your body actually matters in the long run. The weight of the actual belt is a little bit heavy compared to other belts. If I were to guess, it probably weighs between, I would say, 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 kilos, or about 0 0.6 to 0 0.9 pounds which really isn't that big of a deal, but my first belt was a much lighter belt in comparison to Harbinger dip belt. However, I think the fact that its weight capacity is so high is why I think this dip belt is slightly heavier than other dip belts. One thing that I do recommend you don't use though that comes with the dip belt is the chain. The chain is real heavy, and if I were to guess it probably weighs anywhere between, I would say 0 0.75 kilos or 1.7 pounds and one kilo or about 2.2 pounds. So if you're gonna use the dip belts, definitely get a separate prasik rope or climbing rope and use that rope to make knots out of it because climbing rope is just simply much lighter and more durable. So overall, I think the Rogue dip belt is really solid. It does its job well to a very high degree and it will last you your entire life. Just keep in mind that the aesthetics of the belt wear out over time. So 
In conclusion, I rate this dip belt at 4.5 out of 5 stars. So if you guys enjoyed this review, make sure you leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.